Welcome to Simply Learn, Python versus R versus SAS. My name is Richard Kirshner with the Simply Learn team. That is www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. In our Python versus R versus SAS, we're going to cover today a little bit of the history. We're going to go into the cost, the speed, the ease of learning, data handling, data visualization and graphical analysis, deep learning support, usage and industry. These last parts are all about job search customer and community support, job trends, popularity, preference by industry. So let's take a look at where this came from. In Python, it's an object-oriented programming language that is primarily used for software development and web development and data science. So when we look at the history of Python, it originally wasn't for data analysis and data um, analytics. It was originally a full-blown software package and still is today used widely in all kinds of different um, software development, web development, and data science. R is majorly used by statisticians for statistical analysis, data mining, and machine learning. So it was designed just for doing uh, data analysis. And SAS is a statistical software suite widely used for business intelligence. You might hear that as BI for business intelligence. Data management and predictive analysis. And like R, it's designed specifically for your data science. So we look at the history. Python was created by Guido van Rosum in 1990 as a successor to ABC language. And it was named after the British TV show Monty Python and is written in C. So our back end is a C code. And I always like the fact that it was Monty Python that it came from and Flying Circus and Life According to Bryant and all the fun ones. And then R was created by Ross Hihaka and Robert Gentleman as an implementation of the S programming language. Named after the first names of the two R authors and is written in C, Fortran, and R. So when they put this together, they put together all kinds of different tools, um, pulling it all together. And so you see both Fortran and C as a back end. And then we have SAS. SAS was developed at North Carolina State University. And that was done from 1966 to 1976 by Anthony J. Barr. It's written in the C language and started as a project to analyze agricultural data and increase crop yield. And this is interesting because Python came up in the um, early 19, what, 1994 or so, and so did R. They came about the same time. But R was just data science, where Python came, uh, started up as a programming language. And so we talk about the initial release of Python. It came out in 1994, followed by version 2 of Python in 2000, and in 2008, Python version 3 was released. The recent release of Python is 3.7.4, although they just came out with the beta on the 3.8, and that's now come out, uh, it's coming out as a stable version here in uh, 2019. R has its initial version released in 1995, so there's our 1994 for Python, a year older than R, but keep in mind that R was right off the bat for data science. Python was not. It was a general programming language. And it had a stable version, and R had a stable beta version in 2000. R version 2.0 came out in 2004, followed by versions 3.0 in 2013. Version 3.6.1 is the recent release. And SAS had many releases since 1972. You know, after 50 years, almost 50 years, that's a long time. Since the release of version 9.3, SAS stat has its own release numbering. So we look at cost. Of course, if you're a business investing in these different softwares, it's important to understand the cost and the benefit. Python is an open source programming language which is completely free. So it's used by anybody who needs it or wants to download it. You could download it now for free of cost, no charge. R is also open source, which can be downloaded and used by individuals and organizations. So it too is a free language available for anybody who wants to download and use it. SAS, on the other hand, is a proprietary software. And companies need to pay a considerable amount to use it. SAS has also introduced a free university edition. So they do have a limited edition you can use for doing studies and coursework. So when we look at the speed, and we'll come back to the cost and why you'd want to invest in SAS and some of its benefits. But when we go on, we want to look at the speed. Python being a high-level programming language is faster for building large applications and web development. This makes sense because you can actually replace your ASP, your PHP, all of your Java backend enterprise that goes on the server. You can actually do that in Python and have it directly put out the web pages. So for doing web development, it's probably one of the fastest combinations of data science and web output. R is a low-level programming language, so you need more extended codes for simple procedures, which results in reduced speed. 
Now, when I say simple procedures, I'm talking about the coding side of it. R is very fast for doing very basic statistical analysis and getting in your basic setup and basic graphs. And then SAS, SAS enables better data analysis using SAS SQL and automatic code generation with reusable code snippets. So it's a little bit quicker to develop, and they also sit on their own back-end uh, processing setup which is also quite fast. When we talk about ease of learning, Python is a scripting language that provides easy and simple syntax with the analytics-friendly libraries. It has become a phenomenon in the data analytics. And this is just really cool because there's so many modules out there. That is probably the hardest part about learning Python is all the modules and the learning. It is just really hard to track them all. R has a little bit of that problem too. R also has a steep learning curve because it is a low-level language and needs working knowledge of coding. And Again, I'll supplement that, that R itself, when you're doing certain tasks in R, they're actually easier uh, than other programming languages when you do your first analysis. And then SAS, SAS is supposed to be the easiest to learn among the three and has a simple GUI or general user interface. It can be picked up by anyone without a prior programming language. This is a huge benefit. And if you remember correctly, we talked about SAS being a paid for product. This is one of the reasons people pay for it because a manager can go in there or a team leader who might not know a lot about data science and still use it and do a lot of basic things in there that uh, the data sciences do also so they can follow it and work with them. And then we talk about data handling. Python has popular libraries such as NumPy and Pandas for data analysis and manipulation, which makes data handling in Python easier. And NumPy is just you can look at it as a giant array, so it's very fast, and it's always increasing their speed and how they can maximize that speed. That's why NumPy is so popular. Then Panda is your data sheet. Uh, if you ever work with big data like Spark, you're always talking about the data sheet, that data frame when you're looking at something that's almost like an Excel spreadsheet. And then R has a disadvantage as it works only on RAM, and small tasks will take time to run. But data manipulation is easier with the packages like PLYR and DPLYR and TOIDYR. So these different packages, just like modules in Python, you do everything in modules in Python. With R, you start finding there's all these packages that have been slowly added in that makes it more and more compatible and easier to use. The fact that the basic R loads it into RAM makes it difficult to work with very large data sets. This is not completely true. As we talk about big data, there's a whole other state setup on there, and you can actually work R with what's called H2OR. And then SAS can perform efficient data handling and manipulation using the data step, which compiles and runs faster. And this is their own backend. This is all in-house proprietary ship for their data step, which really helps the efficiency in data handling. That said, both R and Python are open source, and we see huge jumps in how fast it can process the data and how good it is at pulling data and data handling. And then we talk about data visualization and graphical analysis. This is huge in data science. To be honest, if you can't display your data and your results in a way that anybody can understand it, if you can't take it to the head of the sales team and the head of the marketing and the CEO of the company and say, here, this is what it looks like, and give them a visual, you're in trouble. It's got to look good, and you got to put out something fast and easy and quickly spin up uh, your own setup on there and show them what's going on. Now, Python has packages like Matplotlibrary, Seaborn, and Visby that make it powerful for data visualization and graphical analysis. And I'm going to come back a little bit and talk about Python in comparison as we look into R and into SAS. R wins among the three for data visualization and analysis with packages like ggplot, lattice, ggviz, and rgis, etc. What I like about R is I can so quickly pump the results out and put it into an easy-to-see graph that I can print out and show somebody, which makes it really just, for initial data analysis, uh, the winner of all three of these. Now, when we talk about Python, Python, and they show Seaborn and Matplotlibrary, VizPy, they have so many packages that you can do a lot of what you can do in R. You can do even more. And one of the things about visualization in Python is that you can spin up some of the coolest graphs and things like that, but you, it's a high learning curve. It takes a lot to go in there and figure out how to do it, say, in Matplotlibrary. Seaborn sits on top of Matplotlibrary and automates some of that and has some new features, and you can do all the things you do in R, and you can actually do a lot more 
more in your um, plotting and in your graphing. And then we talk about SAS. SAS has been working to improve its visualization and graphical capabilities, but is yet to match the standards of Python and R. One of the nice things about SAS is it does a lot of things automatic, but it's very limited in what you can do. So that's the downside of SAS, where R can do some fairly complicated graphs right out of the box, easy to set up. And then if you're willing to go in and dig into all these different modules and figure out which one does which, Python can do significantly more and publish it out into the web and has all kinds of additional features. So you can see that these three different packages have very different data visualization or in different places as far as their visualization and graphical analysis. Now a lot of people will work in R and do some very basic stuff in R and put out some basic graphs and then they'll do the actual project in Python or SAS. Just because R can get you right out the door just so amazingly fast. You can do a lot of cool things in R with very little work. So we talk about deep learning. This is your neural networks. Uh, right now the two big neural networks are out there are TensorFlow and Keras. Python has had major developments in the fields of deep learning with libraries such as TensorFlow and Keras and is being used by data scientists. And it has the sklearn that has a deep learning package. It has so many different options for neural networks now and it is a leading choice as far as a number of different neural networks that plug into it. So we talk about R. R has added packages like Keras R that acts as an interface to the original Python packages. Keras. It has other packages like MXNetR, H2O for deep learning, and I mentioned the H2O H2O earlier. The H2O is really the package that puts it over multiple computers. That's your big data. So now lets you use multiple processors more efficiently and that actually sits on the same Hadoop Spark framework. Uh, so your H2O usually uses what's called YARN, yet another resource negotiator which is an integrated part of Hadoop and Spark. And then SAS. SAS is working to improve its deep learning support with open source packages like DLPY, CAFE models, and building its own deep learning toolkit. So if you're working in neural networks and deep learning, SAS is a couple steps behind, but given how quickly these things develop, don't be surprised if it shows up tomorrow on the SAS and it's up to date with everybody else. And then go one more step in here before we leave the whole R, SAS, and deep learning and start looking at the industries and where this is being used. Something to note is that there is a whole development in process that's starting to release R modules that function in Python. So we're starting to see a crossover. People in Python are real, realizing if they're using the R as their basis, why not build it into the Python package and then you can have it all in one setup. So let's go ahead and jump into usage in industry. And this is last part of this discussion today. This is, of course, looking for jobs. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? More if you're uh, looking to see if your business or corporation, sometimes it's good to use the same packages that everybody else is using in that industry. The reason being that if they're developing their tools, some of those tools get published. And you start seeing those in the help boards. And so much more comes out that it makes it a lot easier to dive in and get your job done. Python is used in organizations to build web apps, analyze data, automate operations via DevOps, and build machine learning and deep learning models. Now keep in mind, Python is probably the most widely used of these three as far as a diverse program, and it is a full programming language. R, R is majorly used for statistical analysis, data mining, data visualization, and machine learning. It is used in every field, finance, bioscience, manufacturing, supply chain, uh, and you really see that, you know, back in the 90s, finance and bioscience and these huge research and development going on in these different companies went to R because back in the 90s R was the only really solid thing out there or SAS. Those were your two choices. Then Python started building their modules coming up and so Python stepped in and it's only been the last uh, 10 years that Python has uh, really taken off as a data science tool. And SAS has found vast uses in the pharmaceutical industry for analyzing patient records, creating safe drugs, and clinical research. It is also used for weather forecasting and business intelligence. Well, there's that BI, business intelligence. SAS probably is really widely used in the uh, business intelligence field. That's one of the main areas you, you'll see it in there. But it's used across all of these industries. And we'll go ahead and take a closer look at some of the graphs uh, showing where these different tools are being used. Customer and community support. Now, this is important. Uh, before we dive into the graphs, since Python is free, it doesn't have any customer support. But it has a huge online community support to raise your issues. You can go into Google and uh, type in Python and what you're looking for, Python TensorFlow, and you'll just see tons of different support pages coming up, forums, all kind of places where people have posted information on Python and what
whatever module you're looking into or whatever you're trying to do. That's also a downside because you have to dig through all those postings to find the one that is what you're looking for. R also does not provide customer support and it too has a large online community support to solve your queries. So you can go in and look and say hey how do I do this in R and just pull that right up and usually you can get the answer rather quickly off the forums. Now, SaaS, because it's a paid-for uh, service, has 24-7 customer support to assist you as well as an online community to help solve your doubts. That's pretty powerful if you're in a large business. So what I see in startup businesses or business starting now, if it's a large company and they already have SaaS in some of their other areas, they'll go with the support because they usually have the money to fund it. Startups, on the other hand, will almost always go for the Python and the R. A lot of times they'll utilize both of those in their back-end development and in their R&D. So let's look at job trends. Python has a huge demand with numerous companies looking for resources who know Python. So the job openings for Python is very high. This is expected to increase in the future. And you can see this is actually a generic graph in there. It's not the actual data. But this is a trend. It's just shooting straight up. It's a heavy growth in Python. R is also a very high demand in the field of statistics and data analysis. Companies are looking for professionals who can handle their data efficiently. Now, Python is taking off faster than R, but that is because because it's widely used in other uses in, in addition to data science because it is a full programming language. But both R and Python, uh, just by the nature of the fact that data science is taking off, are probably two of the fastest growing tools in data science and in the industry. And SaaS, SaaS is mostly used in big organizations who can afford the cost to buy the SaaS software and its usage is limited. So there are lesser number of jobs in SaaS as compared to Python and R. And we're starting to see a drop off in SaaS. I would imagine that given how fast data science is growing, that that drop off will probably level off just because there is such a big demand in data science. And then when we look at popularity, we start looking at the number of people using it and you can see right here Python is the most popular and then R comes in a, a little bit below and then right below that is SAS. And this is, again, note that Python is used for a lot of other things instead of just data science. And I think that feeds into that 41%. You know, so the actual industry-wise might be a little closer. It's kind of hard to tell and actually pull these numbers out and uh, get a full view of them. And we can dig a little bit closer and actually look at by industry. You can see here telecommunication is primarily Python. Uh, you can see in consulting kind of a share between Python and R. Marketing. Marketing used to be just SaaS and then Python has really come in and now it matches the, the uh, demand in marketing. Finance. Again, SaaS used to be the top one in finance and then Python over the last decade has really shot up. Uh, retail. Retail, it's kind of been across the board but you can see that Python again is taking the industry and then healthcare. Healthcare used to be just SaaS and then R came in and then Python is come up and now they're pretty much neck to neck as far as far as a preference by industry. So as you start looking at different jobs and trying to decide which one you want to use or if you're a company trying to figure out which one uh, is going to be your best tool, it's kind of good to look at all the different aspects and cost and what's that going to mean to uh, your team. Do you need the 24-7 support? Are you going to want something that your uh, manager can get in and use quite easily in SaaS or do you want to have them where they, they're going to have to start building more tools? and do those presentations a little bit more, which is your R and Python. So we'll go ahead and wrap that up. Thank you for joining us today. We covered a lot of information today as far as the difference between Python, R, and SAS. If you have any questions, feel free to post them down below in the YouTube comments. And please join our YouTube subscription. We have many other different publications we put out that you might find useful. Again, thank you for joining us. This is www.simplylearn.com. Get certified. Get ahead. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.